Hello, everybody, and welcome to this PlatformCon 2025 talk. I'm super excited about speaking about the future of platform engineering. Um, if you've been to previous PlatformCon, you'll know that this is really the place where we all come together as a community and really the entire market, the entire DevOps, cloud native, really enterprise IT market comes together and tries and understand what are the upcoming trends uh, and really what the, future, what the future holds for the industry at large and specifically for platform engineering, which is playing a larger and larger role within this industry as we move forward and as it matures as a trend and as a discipline and as a community. And this is really the core of what I want to talk about today, where platform engineering is going and why, you know, in a bit of an exaggerated Italian way is eating the world. Of course, this is not uh, a quote that I've come up with. Um, and, you know, just quickly about me, you know, I, I host Platform Con, so you will see me on the uh, Monday kickoff. You'll see me at the live days is, if you're attending there. Um, and uh, I write Platform Weekly that goes out to 100,000 uh, platform engineers every week. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, this quote is obviously not something that I've come up with is originally famous because of Mark Andreessen, who's in 2011 famously said, software is eating the world. Um, and, you know, that was really this like, you know, kind of bold prediction at the time that really everything would become software. And of course, as we all know, it did. Um, and so, but of course now we are at a, at a at the next inflection point, as we all know, nothing new here either, uh, which is AI is eating software, right? Um, and by, definition is also eating everything else in the world with it if uh, software is eating the world before it and uh, you know obviously there's a ton of stuff on consumer chat gpt uh, there's a ton of models also more for b2b you know claude and thropic um you know china us geopolitics we all know right um it's crazy and it's uh, probably one of the most fascinating times to be alive as a technologist um so we all know that it's super cool. Um, here you can see a couple more data points specifically for from Gartner, uh, which is one of a very established analyst that we've been uh, kind of quoting here in the community quite a bit when it comes to platform engineering and AI. And here's their app cycle from 2025 from this year. And then of course, there's a total deluge of talks about AI and kind of like the intersection of AI and platform engineering uh, that we have received out of the thousand plus submissions for this year's platform con. Um, and of course, if we double click for a second on this on, on this intersection between AI and platform engineering, I've actually written an article about it uh, on platformengineering.org uh, a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, uh, where really you can kind of realize that you, you can sort of, you, you can see this kind of like fork in the road. Uh, and also when it comes to platform con talks, actually you'll see really they're clustering along these two dimensions. On the one hand, you have this, you know, AI powered platforms, right? Um, and this is really, okay, what can AI do for PE, right? Well, how can AI make our platforms that we build better, um, you know, through natural language interfaces, uh, through agentic workflows and automations and so on, right? And then the flip side of that is platforms for AI. So of course, in order for AI to run, we need an underlying platforms. Um, and this is really use cases like, okay, how do I, manage AI and ML workload the same way I do other workloads. So how do I think about data management and so on and so forth. So I think it's really interesting to see that actually platform call and talks and submissions have, you know, further clustered around these two groups. And, you know, if we um, kind of like double click um, on, a, um, on, on, on a data point uh, from a recent survey that we ran with, you know, 200 plus uh, teams uh, of all sizes, but a lot of enterprise, 900 plus contributors, um, we can see that the platform team is more and more being asked, right, to host this AI workloads, this data workloads, or just broadly AI infused applications, right? You can see here that 10% is already yes a lot, 25% yes, but few, and then 40% not uh, yet, but coming very soon, right? So really three three quarters here um, of, of the market are already either expecting it to come very soon or they're already uh, doing this. What? Well, really, um, 
this, right? The platform team, the platform engineering team is already ser serving all these new users, right? So while until now, really, when, we're, when we thought about platform teams and platform engineers, uh, mostly they've been serving uh, application developers, right? Of course, an internal developer platform has many different users, architects, security teams, um, you know, executives, and, but, but, but at the end of the day, the, the end user really is the application developer, right? However, here we're starting to see as, um, as um, you know, these, uh, as, the, as the market develops, as, as really more and more falls under this uh, platform engineering umbrella, uh, we're seeing that the platform team now needs to serve uh, new users, data scientists, MLOps engineers, data engineers, and so on. So that's very, very interesting, right? Because as, you know, while AI is obviously taking over not just the consumer world, but also the B2B and enterprise world, we're seeing actually, it's not that, you know, people are, are setting up this like, you know, new AI teams. Yes, they are, maybe for, from a business process management perspective and business process automation standpoint. But at the end of the day, that team relies on top of the platform team to actually run the, this, this abstraction layer that the AI models and applications use to operate, right? And so that's very, very interesting because while AI is really taking up all the headlines, really this platforms for AIs are gonna be the really the backbone of all of this, right? So very, very interesting. Um, and, 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 and what that I think highlights is the fact that really platform engineering at this point is really maturing to be the thing that you need in order to make anything enterprise grade, right? And enterprise friendly. So yeah, you know, this all AI hype is great and it's very, very helpful, but you know, you can't just stop at, you know, some quick documentations tweak, um, you know, and LLM interfaces there and some code generation, all those things are great. But how about infra code? How about pushing to production? That is where you need this underlying platform to sustain um, all of that and really make it enterprise ready. And that's really what platform engineering is about. And platform engineering is really growing up. We can see we're now at this inflection point um, where the blueprints, the frameworks, and, and the social technical ways of working with platforms have really matured and are now ready to actually take up this increased load, increased responsibilities that come with AI. Um, and a perfect example, I think, is reference architectures. For those of you who are uh, you know, familiar with that, this is a, a very famous blueprint that we have released back in 2023 at PlatformCon, actually. And then PlatformCon24 last year, about 20% of the talks used this as a blueprint to talk people through what a platform for an enterprise looks like. Um, and we're actually gonna release a V2 very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but another example is actually something that we are releasing this week, actually a PlatformCon, which is a, the, um, the data reference architectures, right? Um, so these are slightly different types of um, platforms that, 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 that look at, if we zoom in for a second, that are optimized for this data and AI use cases. They are optimized for data scientists, MLOps engineers. You can see there are different interfaces, notebook workspaces beyond the usual CLI and portals. Uh, you can see that the integration delivery plane not only has the CICD pipeline as expected, but also the data ML pipeline, which then you know feeds off of the data uh, and a data model management plane with things like model registry, which then of course then sits on top of things like data stores um, and and so on. Right. So um, very 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 interesting, I think, to see how um, you know the blueprints and the frameworks that we use. This is not a um, an infrastructure diagram, right? This is really like an abstracted mental model of how to think about all your different workflows and all the different bits and pieces of your setup and the interplay between them, right? Um, and, and really cool to see, I think, how we are evolving as a community, as a market to accommodate for these new needs. Um, and this is not only on the reference architecture angle, but also for those of you who are familiar with that, with how we think about the platform team. This is 
um, the, um, the sort of uh, an image that for, ev for any of you that have already taken either the practitioner or the professional certification from the community will have definitely seen multiple times. Um, and I think broadly has become now a, a helpful mental model in the community and the market to really think about this platform team as you know interacting with all these different stakeholders. But we're now in 2025 updating it, right, to this, um, to a much more complete um, sort of uh, picture, right? Um, that of course, where the platform team interfaces themselves with multiple stakeholders, more stakeholders, specifically SRE teams, uh, data scientists, right? And, and the data teams. And of course, is starting to have a more granular um, um, sort of look uh, and feel for the, for the different personas, right? We moved past just the head of platform and kind of like the, you know, platform product manager with a couple of engineers and really gone into, okay, well, we actually really need security platform engineers to interface with security teams. We need observability platform engineers, reliability platform engineers to talk to SRE teams. And of course, and very importantly, and also how we started this and the framework for, you know, what is the biggest trend in 2025, of course, data and AI, data and AI platform engineers, right? That interface themselves with the platform teams. And so we've actually in the community started reorganizing our entire narrative and content streams um, and tagging things by these new personas. We have, of course, a huge ambassador program um, that you can go and check out on the website where we're getting a lot of submissions, a lot of interesting content, whether video or text, uh, by our ambassadors. And we're starting to re-tag it all along these dimensions because we really were seeing this as emerging um, sort of um, behavior, uh, right, in the marketing and the content around this different persona. So I highly recommend you go check out uh, platformengineering.org slash blog. This is where you can see the different uh, persona uh, sub subsections. And of course, stay tuned. There's a lot more coming uh, that we're going to, that we're announcing this week at PlatformCon, but it is coming really in the coming weeks. The state of AI and platform engineering, brand new report uh, with a ton of interesting data uh, that you've just seen a little, little sneak peek of. Um, so super excited about that. And then of course, the Platform Engineering University. This has been a huge success, I think, in the community in the last year or so. Um, last year, we launched the first kind of practitioner um, of course, this has now grown to having a free intro that you can go take right now, uh, a practitioner and a professional. We're soon going to add a leadership course as well that we're announcing this week, and then many, many more, right? We have the cloud development environments. We're going to have observability platform engineering, Kubernetes resource management, GitOps portals. There's a ton coming, all free. Um, in addition to our core track of practitioner and professional, where you can really go and cer uh, get certified. And more and more, we're going to organize these courses also alongside these personas, right? Because this is really where we see the future of platform engineering going. Um, the fastest growing segment in our community is data engineers, followed by security teams, architects, and so on. And so really, this reflects the need for a broadened scope of educational material and content that we're really working hard here in the community to provide to you. So go check out platformengineering.org, sign up for the courses, um, sign up for the wait list for the, for the white papers, um, and really, I hope you enjoy, and really go and enjoy the rest of the event. This is the Platform Engineering Celebration of the Year, so make the most of it, and uh, see you in London, see you in New York if you're there, uh, or see you online in the Slack community. Enjoy.